First Violin por Una Cabeza. Hello guys, it's Ali Reza. In this video, we're going to be talking about um, all the difficulties, shiftings, specific bowings, and specific finger numbers for this piece. As you can see here, I've um, on purpose put all the bowings for all the notes. Now, you may or may not actually need to write all these bowings for every single note. However, if you are to forget what bowings come next, I would strongly suggest that you would write all the bowings for your pieces. Um, and you wouldn't be doing this for every single piece. It's just like an exercise that your brain would get used to processing the notes as they come. After a while of doing this, then you wouldn't actually need to write down the bowings for every single note. Okay. So a few things that I can mention about this piece. One is that obviously make sure you acknowledge pizzicato, arco. Sometimes when you're reading the music fast, you forget when it changes from pizzicato to arco. So what I used to do was to not only circle it, but also highlight it, right? Speaking of which, um, sometimes where you have to take a repeat or DCL female, DCL coda or things like that, I used to also highlight those in the specific colors so then I, my eyes would get used to processing how the mapping of the piece works as well. So starting from the, from the top, um, you already know what to play, whether you're playing the bottom note or top note or both in some cases. Um, all the way up to this point. Make sure as soon as you're done with these two, G and E, you immediately go to the bowing position, go to arco. So as you know, when you're plucking, this is your bow grip. When you're plucking, you don't necessarily have to go to plucking position 100% unless you're plucking for like a page or two for a long time, which would be just grabbing your bow like this, putting the tip of your thumb underneath of the frog and plucking an inch away from the um, fingerboard, underneath of the fingerboard right here, right? But since you're only plucking for like two lines, you're still holding your bow as you would normally, and then you hover it above the strings, then you pluck the strings with your index finger like this. That way you're ready to play with your bow at any time. So just make sure, right here in the music, make sure as soon as you're done with these two beats, you go right into the Okay. Um, let me adjust this camera. There we go. Okay, perfect. So, <clears throat> The first part at A, obviously you know that's on the third position. Now, when you're shifting, make sure your first finger ends up on blue. First finger on blue would be the base finger of your third position, right? And after your third position, your second finger would be the white after blue because B is flat. Then C would be on white, D also would be on white. But not only look at the tapes, but also you need to know the interval between the notes. So A to B flat is a half step, therefore your fingers are touching. B flat to C natural is a whole step, so that's your pattern. And then B, um, C to D natural is also a whole step. So these are your notes. Right? So when you play this part, just as you can see, from A, then shift down, then low fourth finger for E flat. So going over your music real quick, these fingers are obviously, there's only one way of doing them, which you already know. For E flat, low fourth finger, low first finger, and I didn't write down the fingerings because you know what they are. 
but in case you're going to forget them make sure you write down all your fingerings it's a lot better to write them down than to make a mistake while you're performing the piece you can easily ahead of the time well ahead of the time write it down practice it getting you get used to seeing the numbers at the same time as reading the notes and that way you would actually learn the music much faster so write down your fingerings on specific notes that you may or may not forget so low first finger for f natural everything is as it is at b you shift up again to third position one thing to keep in mind try to um, isolate these two different rhythms one is four solid eighth notes the other one is one eighth note one dotted eighth a sixteenth and another eighth so the difference would be four eighth dotted eighth followed by sixteenth so right so make sure you distinguish those two different rhythms so that we all match our rhythm together moving on everything is at ease as it is here is your f sharp sometimes you play it as f natural sometimes it's as f sharp so don't get it confused at <clears throat> excuse me at solo again if you look over your rhythm just the rhythm sequences that you have it repeats itself quite often here 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 as you see so you either have this part either this part triplets or half note dotted chord notes there is nothing too difficult and too um there is not much variety going on there's only like maybe five or six different types of rhythm that you have in this piece so by learning all these different types you would be able to be precise every time you play the rhythm starting from here obviously you know how it goes then Now, this is a little more than top here. For now, try not to do it because you would actually have to play with your fourth finger, three and four, bada bam, D, E, D, like this. So try to learn it as it is, but after you learn the notes precisely as they are, you would be able to add that mordant in as well. And how that works is just like the grace notes, you would place them right before the actual beat. Okay, sometimes right before the actual beat, sometimes right on the beat, at the beginning of the beat. But most of the times it's right before you play that actual beat, which is in this case D. Moving on, for D sharp, I would suggest using your low fourth finger. As you can see. But if high third would work better for you, experiment with both and see which one would work the best. Everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. At D, you already know what happens. You're not playing these notes at their own register this measure this one this one this one and up to this high g everything is played one octave lower however measure 43 is played as it is when you listen to the recording of this piece you'll see that i also played them one octave lower so that when you practice your octave sounds the same as mine so Don't forget, this D sharp should always be low fourth. It's a lot easier, specifically in that case. That D sharp, if you played it on low fourth, would it would make a lot more sense than high third. But make sure you make a tunnel like this, and low fourth doesn't touch your E string. So then you can move on. Okay, so going to the second page, as you can see here, um, from G all the way to here measure 80 you pretty much play the same exact rhythm right but the challenging thing is to identify whether or not you're playing on the downbeats or upbeats right that's uh, one of the common problems that most musicians have 
which is confusing the downbeats and upbeats. And when they're supposed to play on the up, they would end up playing on the downbeats. But um, as you can see, your downbeats on beats 1, 3, and 4, actually you can look at this way, they're all rest. So you have ta 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 ta. One, two, three, four, rest, ta 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 ta, rest, ta, rest, ta, right? And follow the points that I wrote here that would <clears throat> make everybody to be together a lot more, everyone to be unified as far as their articulation. And try to play both notes together on the ones that you can, right? So these are open. So open, open, open G and open D. These ones shared first finger, as you can see, first finger on A, first finger on E. When you have to cover two strings with one finger, you technically put your finger almost in the middle of these two strings, where you usually, if you were only on G, you would put the middle of your finger, like the center of your finger on G, the center on D or whichever. But when you're playing on both, you would put your center of your finger in between these two strings, right? That way you would be able to pretty much cover both notes, both the strings. Like this. When you put your fingers in between them. Okay. Um, in this measure, don't try to do both because that requires you to play D with your fourth and F sharp. This is pretty difficult for most of you, so don't do that one. Just do the ones that are easy, either open or first fingers, or this one, open and first finger. Um, in this one, this measure could be pretty tricky. You can easily write on your fingers. Um, B would be your second finger. And F would be high first finger because your second finger is already occupied, right? And you're going to play that B once more. So you play open G, B, and then raise your first finger to where you would normally put your low second for F natural. See? The whites after yellow, this one. And then once you played your B, hold it down like this. Then you adjust your F natural, then you play them both together. So, if you can see them like this, see, you go from low to high. That's the only one that's different, then you go back to normal. E flat, low first, C sharp. In this case, you have to use low fourth for this C sharp. The best fingering for this spot would be low fourth. So first finger on A, low fourth for C sharp, then normal third for G, right here. Instead of high fourth, low fourth, C. And then you don't need to hold down to your low fourth because the notes that you play right after are open D and first finger A. Moving on, everything would be easy, just arpeggios, G major arpeggio, follow the goings. At H, you play the same melody, only this time in G major, which means there is no longer F natural or B flat. Here is still your second finger and third position, but in case, instead of low, low second, right after blue on white, you actually put it on the orange tape. So normal second on third position. Then your third finger is where it was already, but since your second finger is now normal, your third finger is connecting to your second, fourth as it was before. So, as you can see, then open E. Um, G, I mean, and open. There it says as it is. And A 
A, G, A, B. All the notes are very, very easy up to this point. As soon as that's over, you again shift up to the third position. And again, don't try to let go of your, don't let go of your first finger, even though you're not playing it yet. When you aim for B, you have to adjust your first finger first. Remember, this is your bass. And then play your second. G. And that would be the end of it. All the way up to here, everything would be exactly the same. Starting from here, we technically go back to G minor, but this time you're not playing the melody. Second violin is playing the melody, and you, but you do have F natural, so the key is now again G minor. Don't forget to play F natural, low first, and low fourth for E flat. Low first for B. And here's the tricky part. When your low first finger is for B, you automatically either lower your first finger or move your entire hand back, right? But then the next note is actually C sharp. Now C sharp in normal position, you just usually normally just use high second. But when your first finger is low, that's gonna feel even higher than what it usually feels. So make sure look at your tapes and make sure you listen to your C sharp. It really has to be this sound. And then C natural and then B flat. Then the next time, remember we talked about doing a little mordant here that we put it on the A. Like this. The um, second high A. You could do and then A B A. You would do the mordants we B flat, which is low fourth. So open A A B A G F G, right? So like that. Then moving on. Same thing as before, F natural, E flat, B flat, here's your E natural, so no longer E flat, just go ahead and play that as open E. Now this scale here almost sounds like a G minor scale, right? So play the first four notes, right, and then second four notes. Low fourth, F natural, F sharp, G. For F natural, F sharp, G, you could either do low first, normal first, second, or low first, low third, low, low second, low third. Ba -da -bam. Then you don't have to do any sliding if this works easier for you. I would do it with low first, normal first, second, low second, like this. But if you want, that would also work as long as you do those are the notes and it doesn't go faster than what I just played it at that's pretty much it one last thing before we move on to the next piece try to absorb dynamics too right one of the most beautiful part of playing music is to follow its articulation right not just to play the notes but also play it with musicality which includes dynamics, correct bowings, correct bow usage and overall making it sound very beautiful which starts with following what's on the page first. Okay that's all I have to mention about this piece and have fun practicing guys.